Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top seven reasons why your electric range won't start. Stick around to the end of the video for some important safety tips that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. The first thing to check is the power supply. Electric ranges need a full 240 volts to heat properly. If you only have 120 volts coming in, the lights may come on, but the range won't heat. So you'll need to go check the circuit breakers. Whether they're tripped or not, we're going to reset them. Then we can check the wall socket with a multimeter set to volts AC. Test each side to make sure it reads 120 volts. And 240 volts combined. Keep in mind that the number can fluctuate up or down by 10%. If the socket doesn't have proper voltage, then either it or one of the circuit breakers may need to be replaced. Next we can check the thermal fuse. It's a safety device that shuts off the power to the elements if the range overheats. The thermal fuse is usually a small round fuse that shuts the power off if the range goes over the rated temperature of the fuse. They usually have two wire terminals to attach the wires. They're usually located on the back of the range behind an access panel. If your electric range won't start, it could be that the thermal fuse has failed. To see if it's bad, we'll have to test it for continuity. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we have to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. Once you have access to it, you can take the wires off and touch a test probe to each terminal. If it doesn't have continuity, then it'll have to be replaced. If you need to order a part, simply go to appliancepartspros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Now we can check the oven temperature sensor it tells the control board the temperature inside the oven. Oven temperature sensors are a type of resistor in which the ohms reading will change as the temperature does. They're usually a small metal rod with a mounting plate and two wires. Oven temperature sensors are usually mounted in the upper left or right corner of the oven, but in order to test it, you'll have to go around to the back of the range. If the range won't start, it could be because the temperature sensor is bad the most common sensor should read around 1080 ohms at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If you aren't sure, you can always look at the tech sheet for your range. The sensor can fail in two ways. If the ohms reading is off, it could cause the oven temperature to be different than what you selected. Or if it's totally failed and you don't get a reading at all, then the range won't start. So set your meter to ohms. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms are coming in but you may need to set your meter to read the proper ohm level. Once you have access to the sensor, remove the wires and touch a test probe to each terminal. If the ohms reading is way off or you don't get a reading at all, it'll have to be replaced. Now we can check the bake element. It helps heat up the oven. The bake element is a cowl rod type element shaped to fit the bottom of the oven with wire terminals on each end. It's usually located on the bottom of the oven, but some newer bake elements are hidden under the bottom of the oven. If your electric range won't start, it could be that the element has failed and won't start heating. Sometimes when they fail, they create obvious holes or burn marks in the element, so inspect it for any damage. If you don't see any, we'll have to test it for continuity. So set your meter to continuity again. In most cases, you can remove the mounting screws that hold the element in and pull it forward. Once you have access to the wires, remove them, but be careful they don't slip back through the hole, otherwise you'll have to fish them out. Then touch a test probe to each terminal of the element. If it doesn't have continuity, it's bad and will have to be replaced. Also, if you notice any swelling or damage, you should replace it even if it has continuity. Next, we can check the broil element. It helps heat up the oven. The broil element is usually mounted on the top of the oven. It's a cow rod element with two wire terminals and usually has a few more turns than the bake element. The broil element is located on the top of the oven cavity. 
If you're trying to broil something and the broil element is bad, then the range won't start. Sometimes when the element fails, it'll make holes or burn marks, so inspect it for any damage. If it looks okay, we'll have to test it for continuity. In most cases, you can remove the mounting screws that hold the element in and pull it forward. Once you have access to the wires, you can remove them, but be careful they don't slip back through the rear hole, otherwise you'll have to retrieve them. Touch a test probe to each terminal of the element. If it doesn't have continuity, then it's bad and will have to be replaced. If you see any swelling or damage, you should replace the element, even if it has continuity. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. The next thing to check is the surface element. It's what you set your pan on to heat it up. The most common surface element is the cow rod type element. The elements are coiled up into 6 and 8 inch sizes with wire terminals that plug into the element receptacle. They're located on the cooktop of the range. If the range won't start when you turn the power on to the element, it could be that the element has failed. In order to test it, we're going to pull it out of the terminal block and inspect it. Sometimes they create obvious holes or burn marks when they fail, so inspect the element for any damage. Also look at the terminals. If they're burnt up, it usually means the receptacle is bad too. If you don't see any damage, then we'll have to test it for continuity. Touch a test probe to each terminal of the element. If it doesn't have continuity, it's bad and will have to be replaced. If you find any swelling or damage, you should replace it, even if it has continuity. The last thing to check is the surface element receptacle. It's what the surface element plugs into. The surface element receptacle is usually made out of ceramic or plastic. They have two wire terminals inside the receptacle that the surface element plugs into. If the surface element receptacle has failed, the range surface element won't start when you turn it on. It's located underneath the cooktop. In order to inspect it, we have to take out the element in the drip pan, then remove the mounting screw. Once you have the screw out, you can lift up the receptacle enough to see it. Look down into the receptacle. You can see the terminals and tell if they're burnt. A lot of times, the receptacle will also have a burnt smell. Look at the element to see if the terminals are burnt up. That's a good indication that the receptacle has failed. And if it's bad enough, the element may have to be changed too. If the receptacle is bad, you'll have to change it out. Now here are those safety tips we mentioned earlier. A lot of people are still using aluminum foil to protect their ranges from spills and grease buildup. Although it may seem like a good idea, you may not be aware of the dangers it can pose. Firefighters respond to over 170,000 kitchen fires per year, and failing to keep the range clean is linked to more than 13,000 of those. On electric cooktops, many people cover the drip pans with foil so they don't have to clean them, but this can cause moisture retention, making them rust even faster. It can also block airflow, reflect heat back into the elements damaging them, or if the foil touches the element, it could be a shock hazard or start a fire. On gas cooktops, wrapping the grates, burner heads, or drip pans in foil can cause heat retention, carbon monoxide poisoning, as well as starting a fire. In general, you'll want to avoid lining the oven with foil because it could block air passages, causing heat buildup that causes poor cooking and increases the dangers of a fire. If the foil gets too hot, it could melt, damaging the oven lining or starting a fire. With electric ovens, putting foil under the element could cause heat to be reflected back into the oven, overcooking the food and possibly damaging the element. If the foil touches the element, it could become a shock hazard. In gas ovens, blocking air passages could affect the burner operation, causing poor cooking and carbon monoxide poisoning. You also don't want to completely cover an oven rack, as this will disrupt the airflow and cause cooking problems. You should only use a small pan on a rack several inches below the food you're cooking to catch drips. Due to these dangers, you don't want to use aluminum foil to try to keep the range clean. You should clean the oven and underneath the cooktop regularly to prevent grease buildup. So keep the foil off the range, keep it clean, and keep an eye on it while you're cooking. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now. And if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.